Hey, you cool cats. Welcome back to the program. I know I've been MIA for like the last month, but I do have some very good excuses. And they include coming down with COVID, which then developed into a cold, which then developed into a sinusitis. On top of all of that, I quit my nice, cushy, guaranteed income of a day job. And like any good millennial that doesn't quite know what to do with their life and kind of had a mini freak out and breakdown, I definitely procrastinated a little bit. And finally, as you can see, not only while I was sick, but also procrastinating, I bought a whole pile of crap and decided to redesign my entire office. So we got some sound panels in the back to hopefully improve your experience. We got some lights. I went to the Calgary Stampede here in Calgary, Alberta. It's a big old celebration and all that kind of crap. And I want old psychedelic Scooby over here. But we rearranged everything pretty much in my life to start a new beginning and to bring you the most awesomest content on the internet. At least that's what I continue to tell myself. Nonetheless, I am back. We are back on track. And I am excited for today's episode where we're going to talk about Ozempic, Saxenda, Wagovi, and the fatigue that can sometimes be associated with these weight loss medications. But before we jump in, and for those of you that might be brand new here, my name is Dr. Dan. I am a pharmacist turned obesity expert, and I need you to hit the subscribe button down below so that A, you don't miss another episode. As soon as they come out, you will be notified. As well, you know, you're going to help to pump up my self-esteem and make me feel real good about myself and that, you know, all these fucking changes I did were well worth it. So let's jump into it. Fatigue with the GLP-1 receptor agonists such as Saxenda, Wagovi, and Ozempic. Now, this isn't like the hair loss side effect where it seems to be kind of something that's coming out in the post-marketing and really wasn't identified in the actual clinical trials that got these drugs to market themselves. Fatigue was definitely noted as a more common side effect along with the GI side effects such as nausea, vomiting, and that sort of thing. And in particular, this was definitely a side effect that was noted with Wagovi, which, if you remember, is Ozempic just at a higher dose of 2.4 milligrams once per week. But before we get too much further, let's actually define what we mean by fatigue. As per the Mayo Clinic, fatigue is defined as an unrelenting exhaustion that isn't relieved by rest. It is a constant state of weariness that reduces your motivation, concentration, and basically your will to live. And it can have quite an effect on your psychological and emotional well-being. Now, don't worry, you're not alone if you also thought, shit, that is like my normal day-to-day -day existence, because I, I definitely felt that as well. But that is ultimately a different topic for a different day. Today, we're going to talk about it in relation to the GLP-1 receptor agonist. Now, from a pharmacological perspective, there is no mechanism, at least no mechanism that we're aware of, where we can say that the GLP-1 receptor agonist bind to X receptor, and that ultimately leads to tiredness and fatigue. A lot of you might be saying, well, what about the fact that it reduces blood sugar levels? which you are very correct in saying. And in fact, having blood sugar levels that are too low or something that we call hypoglycemia, certainly that can lead to fatigue. The only problem with this theory is that the mechanism by which the GLP-1 receptor agonists reduce your blood sugar levels ultimately shuts off when your blood sugar levels are within a normal range. So these molecules should never drop your blood sugar levels too low, ultimately leading to fatigue unless there is some extenuating circumstance, such as you're taking other medications, you're not eating enough or not eating at all, you've developed the flu or some stomach bug and you're vomiting and that sort of thing. Let me preface this in saying that it is entirely possible that there is some mechanism by which the GLP-1 receptor agonist can cause fatigue. Maybe there's another mechanism or something in that respect of things, and we just haven't discovered it yet, However, it is very unlikely. The much more common reason for these medications to be causing fatigue is actually more because people are not eating enough food when they're taking these medications. And yes, you definitely heard that right. 
food is fuel. We aren't lucky enough to be like fucking plants where we can just sit out in the sun, suck up some CO2, and bam, we are good for the day. Although a few delusional internet influencers will tell you otherwise, that's going towards the breatharians and various people like that, that is just not the case. You cannot indeed just live off of the sun. In fact, you will, you will develop skin cancer. Yeah, okay? We need to eat food. That is how our body ultimately fuels itself and moves us and allows us to do the day-to-day -day things that we ultimately need to do. Without it, our body is going to become fatigued and start to slow down. Further, your body will actually adapt in order to slow down your metabolism to conserve as much energy or fat tissue as possible because it's going to be thinking, hey, we are going through this famine or there isn't a lot of food around, so we need to reduce how much we're actually burning. And we do that by reducing how much you burn by just existing, but also by getting you to slow down and move less. And guess what? That is all going to hinder your weight loss efforts. And I mean, do you ask your car to run without gas? Like, hey car, I want you to run and drive without me putting any fuel in you. Trust me, I've, I've tried to do that now that I've quit my day job and the astronomical prices we're paying for gas. It didn't work. So why the hell would we just ask our body to ultimately do that? I'm sure a number of you are saying, but Dan, I have all of this fuel in the form of fat on my body, hence why I'm on your website and looking to probably manage and lose weight. Why doesn't my body just run on that fuel and we're good to go? Unfortunately, our bodies need a lot more than just fat as an energy source in order to run. There are a multitude of vitamins, minerals, amino acids, and other molecules that we need to take in from our food every single day because our body simply can't synthesize it from the fat that we have stored on our bodies. And I once again hate to burst your bubble, but consuming 800, 1200, even 1500 calories in a day you likely are still not getting the ideal amount of nutrients for your body to properly function and keep you moving and keep the proverbial lights of everything on. And if you've been following me for a while, you will know that these weight loss medications don't really do anything special in terms of our metabolism and helping us to lose weight. The way that they work is that they help to reduce our food-seeking behaviors. So we're likely going to eat less because we're not going out and seeking food as intensively as we were previously. Eating and seeking less food ultimately allows us to get into a calorie deficit, and with the calorie deficit, we can then lose weight. Now, for most people, it is very effective at doing this, and if we couple this with the whole mentality of chronic dieting and always and spending your entire life wanting to be in a smaller body, suddenly your ability or your wanting to eat as little as possible becomes a hell of a lot easier with these medications on board. So you might be losing weight, and hell, you might even be losing weight very quickly, but what is the ultimate cost that is coming with that? Great, we're not eating anything, we lost 100 pounds, fantastic, awesome, but hey, I'm too fucking tired to do anything. Now, by no means am I saying these drugs are a bad thing. We just need to use them in an appropriate fashion to make sure that we're monitoring how much food an individual is taking in to ensure that they're getting an optimal level of nutrition and we're not leading to things like malnutrition while also taking into account that, hey, we're trying to create a calorie deficit. So we're trying to find this balance of losing weight in a healthy manner. And in fact, in my clinical experience, when I work with people and I actually bring their calories up, I bring their protein intake up to an actual appropriate level and help them to properly nourish their body, not only do they get to continue losing weight, they're doing it in a much more sustainable manner, we actually correct a lot of these side effects that they are experiencing so they no longer get the side effects, they're managing their weight in a much more effective and long-term sustainable way, yeah, they're not losing weight as quickly, but they're properly nourishing their body and they're achieving health, which is ultimately the goal we're going for here. What's the point in losing weight if you're going to feel like crap and all your hair is going to fall out? Now, I know a whole bunch of you are going to either jump in the comments here or you're going to send me an email or send me a message or what have you. So I'm going to do a really quick overview in order to determine how many calories you should be eating. I need to do a whole separate video on this entire topic and stuff like that and provide you some other resources. Again, I've been procrastinating the last month. I now have a lot more time. 
that will be coming down the pipeline, I assure you. But today we'll do a quick overview. Number one, we need to figure out what is your goal body weight. So what is the body weight that you want to work towards? Or a goal body weight might be the weight that you've achieved in the past and you think you can maintain into the long term. So let's say your current body weight might be 300 pounds, but your goal body weight is ultimately 200 pounds. What we then do to determine your calorie intake is we take your goal body weight in pounds, not stones, not kilos, in pounds, and you times it by 12. That will be your calorie intake. We then take your goal body weight and we times it by one, and that gives us a rough protein intake that we should be aiming for on a daily basis. So as a quick example here, if your goal body weight is 200 pounds, you take 200, you times it by 12, that equals 2,400 calories. Protein intake, 200 times by one, that gives you 200 grams of protein. So a person whose goal body weight is 200 pounds, they should be aiming to consume about 2,400 calories per day and about 200 grams of protein, which is a more optimal amount to not only help sustain muscle mass, but to also help with satiety and all the other wonderful things that we're looking for when it comes to managing weight. And yes, this calorie amount and this protein amount are probably way more than what you're actually eating right now. But yes, you can still lose weight at that amount if you're consistent with it. You see, so many people, they eat at 1,200 calories Monday through Friday or for a couple of weeks at a time or what have you, and they're very diligent about it. But eventually, biology and everything starts to kick in and override, the medication included, and they end up binging and way over consuming, blowing any kind of calorie deficit they ultimately created. A much more sustainable way to lose and manage your weight is to have a calorie amount that you can actually survive on, that your body can actually properly function and get an optimal amount of nutrients so that, yeah, you're not going to have as much rebound binges, you're going to have better workouts and activity sessions, all of these wonderful things are going to come from it, and you're going to be able to be a lot more consistent with your calories on a more regular basis, which will ultimately lead to a much more sustainable lifestyle. And of course, on top of all of this, you want to add in some resistance training, you want to be getting your mental health worked on, you want to do all the things that you're supposed to do, because that is an all encompassing thing that ultimately is going to lead to your healthiest and happiest lifestyle. Now, the above calculations are just an estimation, that is all they are, but they give you a starting point to ultimately work your way up towards. And if you start working on it consistently, you can make the modifications and tweaks and changes that are going to be most ideal for your body, your body weight and your situation, and ultimately move you towards your goals and helping with these medications. And best of all, manage your fucking fatigue. And hey, of course, if you need some additional help, you know where to find me. My website is healthyball.co. You can find me on all the social media channels of at the official Dr. Dan. Go and check me out there. You can ask me questions on my various videos and stuff like that. I do my best to answer them, but popularity is, is really quite increasing. So it's getting more challenging, but I do my best nonetheless to get to you. You can also book a free consultation with myself to see if you'd be a good fit for our program. And we can certainly help you with this overall process in order to live your happiest and healthiest lifestyle. Now, of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below again. Subscribe to our channel. Would love the support. Would love the feedback. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it, everybody, for fatigue and the GLP-1 receptor agonist. So as always, remember, small tweaks ultimately lead to massive peaks.